evening. I'm Josephine DiVincenzi. I'm the Vice President of STAR, and I want to thank everyone who took the time to come out tonight, and uh, especially I want to thank Jay Schneiderman, our town supervisor, for um, basically giving our uh, organization a chance to um, present to the town board, which we did on February 1st, and I think it was pretty well received, and Jay asked us to organize this public forum the purpose of which is really to explain directly to the public what Southampton Town Aquatics and Recreation Inc. is trying to do for the community. So we, um, we tonight will give an overview and after that overview and a, um, a peek at our brand new website that went up today live, we will um, leave um, a good amount of time for questions and answers. And with us tonight, I will uh, introduce in a moment our consultants who will be here to answer specific questions you may have. But right now, I would like to introduce um, some members of our board. Many of us have been involved with this project for almost 30 years, some even longer. And um, true to form, because it is takes a community and the whole village to do things like this, of this complexity. We even have former board member um, Mary Castro from Hampton Bays who joins us tonight and Rick Stott who was also a former board member and our local architect who is also assisting the project um, and we want to thank them for their work in the past and I'd like to take a moment now to introduce the current STAR board members. Our president, if you would stand for just a minute, and Jean Marie Hazelton is a trial lawyer who banded together many years ago, 1989, um, with community leaders including Carol Zahowski, Dr. Hugh Halsey, Grace Lloyd, and Michael Tortoris, who were all original members of STAR. They've since all been deceased a few years, but their energy still uh, lives on. So they helped Jean form STAR many years ago. Our first vice president, Maria Greenlaw, is a lifelong resident of Southampton whose family's been here four generations. Maria is a local business owner and avid swimmer who became passionate about the project in order to promote swimming as not only a recreational activity, but also a life skill that's essential to living on the East End surrounded by water. Thank you, Maria. Um, as I said, I'm Joe DiVincenzi, Dr. D. I've been a resident of Sag Harbor for 32 years, originally from Boston. Uh, you'll hear that. Uh, she, I came to the East End to serve as high school principal here in Southampton and finished my career here uh, 24 years as assistant superintendent for curriculum. Uh, my life work has been about educating and supporting children and families, and my involvement came after the second child um, died from a drowning accident while I was principal. I uh, found that to be an incredible situation where a young man couldn't swim 10 feet to an overturned boat. And that's when I got involved, and that's why I've stayed involved, and I'm not stopping until this project gets done. Um, our executive vice president is Tim Bishop. Uh, Tim's a lifelong resident of Southampton who probably needs no introduction. A member of the 12th generation of uh, bishops to live in Southampton. He worked at the college for 29 years and served as a member of the U.S. Congress for 12 years representing New York One, uh, which is all of the five East End towns, Brookhaven and parts of Smithtown and Islip. Our secretary, Julianne Purcell, is a resident of Southampton for close to 30 years. She's the director of instructional technology at Southampton Public Schools. She's an educator, swim instructor, coach, mother of two competitive triathletes, swimmers, and lifeguards. She, with her family, have dedicated their lives to swimming and water safety. Our treasurer, unfortunately, couldn't be here, but her husband's substituting. Uh, Dar Riley, Dorothy Riley, lifelong Southamptonite, an ocean enthusiast whose um, two children are adult surfers and a body surfing husband. In, her, in the 50s, her father was a doctor in this town, Dr. Wright, 
and he attempted to build a community pool back in the 50s. Still couldn't get there, but we're going to have his, his daughter finish the job. 20 years ago, um, she joined STAR in a, to bring a thriving water community to everyone in Southampton, and she's still working hard to make it a reality. Another director who can't be with us tonight is Robert Long. He's currently serving as the superintendent of East Quag uh, School District. He had a budget meeting tonight, but he's worked in education for 26 years, with the last 18 of which on the eastern end of Long Island. He and his wife raised their children in Hampton Bays, and um, Mr. Long has spent his career advocating on behalf of children and providing innovative programming and opportunities for his students, and he is making a commitment with his board once this facility is built to bring his kids and the surrounding school's uh, children to the facility. Rose Halsey is a longtime watermill resident, teacher at East Quag, and an avid swimmer. She's committed to the project and hopes all children on the East End will have the opportunity to learn water safety and swim. Ann Welker is a lifelong resident of the eastern end of Long Island, an avid water woman, having grown up on and in our local waters. Her feeling is that swimming is a sport for life. She certainly has helped train many of the people in this town who can swim. Uh, Susan Rumpf came to Southampton in 1983 to teach music at the public schools and has lived here ever since as a pa past triathlete, present sailor, and continued recreational athlete, she's determined to see this project through. Marguerite Smith is an attorney. She's a native to Southampton. She's an educator, lifelong advocate for health, well-being, and good quality of life for all. And finally, uh, one of our newest board members, Barbara Blass. Barbara is a year-round Bayfront resident of the North Fork in Jamesport for almost 40 years. Her public service career is with the town of Riverhead and spanned 30 years, including eight as a councilwoman. She's a synchronized swimmer, continues to promote exercise as a fundamental to health and wellness. We want people, because we know that there are people who um, contributed to this project many, many years ago, and we want everyone to know that every cent that was contributed all those many years ago has sat raising interest and sat untouched for these past 20 years. And because of that fundraising effort, we were able to, two years ago, take the monies that were raised all those many years ago, and because of them, hire the right people that are going to make all our good intentions a reality. We are very optimistic that this time we're ready uh, to bring the concept to concrete. And that's because we secured the professional support of Sports Facility Advisory, represented by the Chief Operating Officer, Evan Elf. And Evan has helped groups like ours build sports facilities in over 40 states and even other countries. And working with him on this project, whenever there's an aquatic facility involved, is uh, the connection with Councilman Hunsaker, which is an aquatic consulting firm um, represented tonight by George Dynas, that is the East Coast representative uh, and director for the firm. And it was Councilman Hunsaker last year. We started this process really in earnest two years ago. We conducted one feasibility study. We weren't sure that the results were accurate. We brought in Councilman Hunsaker to review that and update our figures. And now we can with confidence know that we're going to right size this pool. It's not 50 meters, it's gonna be a 25 yard by 25 meter pool. And we, um, we look forward to having them share their expertise with you tonight. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Evan. Well, thank you, thank you, Joe. And uh, thank you, all of you who are here tonight, those of you who are watching at home or will be watching at home uh, on the, re on the uh, recording. What we're going to do is take 20 minutes or so and really walk you through this project. I want to make sure that at the end of tonight's presentation, you understand the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the STAR project. 
and additionally that you get a chance to ask questions, share insights, and then connect with us as well. So I'm going to uh, walk through first about the Star Center, tell you a little bit about the project team, tell you why it matters, and we'll spend a little more time on that because that's really what's important here. It's what will the Star Center do when it's up and running. I will talk to you quickly about the funding plan, tell you how you can support the Star Center, and then we'll open it up to you as the intent um, per Jay Schneiderman and the town board was to give you a voice, give you a chance to ask questions and participate in this open forum. So uh, just really quickly, Joe covered a lot of the, uh, t uh, the timeline and the history of the project. We sort of break it up into four tranches, right? Uh, 1989, originally, uh, 1989, originally the uh, nonprofit entity, entity was formed. Um, and then in the mid to late 90s, um, Star Center sort of got reinvigorated and went ultimately to town referendum, which did not pass. It didn't, didn't get built. Uh, it got reignited then in 2014 with the original study that Joe just mentioned. And that was, uh, it brought up a lot of questions. It brought up a lot of great insight, um, suggested there was a lot of need here. And that carried forward into really the last 12 months. And you'll see the dark blue there. There's a lot happening, and this is just a fraction of what we're actually working on. But over the last 12 months, this is the momentum that this project will truly need to move forward. So Councilman Hunsaker was originally engaged for their feasibility study. SFA was then brought in for our concept to concrete uh, services, which are taking the concept and figuring out how to get it moving forward from a funded phase. Um, we had, as Joe mentioned, on February 1st, we had the town board meeting to request use of uh, Red Creek Park and use of that land, and they recommended before we do that, we have this open forum for the community. We then engaged Cogio, and I'll talk to a little bit more about them, but that's our um, philanthropic mm -hmm. donation fundraising partner on the capital campaign side. And then we launched the website, and we're here tonight speaking with you. So. Uh, again, the last 12 months, there's been a lot of action, a lot of activity, and a lot of momentum that's been built. Talk to you a little bit about the vision, and many of you have heard this before. You've seen it uh, before through some of the communications that's come out and some of the press releases. But generally speaking, there are some key components to the Star Center. One of them is that it needs to be high quality, and one of them, hand in hand with that, is that it's got to be cost effective and cost sensitive. We want to make sure that this is for everyone in this community, that the services, the programs, the activities that are offered there aren't um, facing barriers from people who uh, wouldn't be able to afford a full price membership or a full price drop in rate for a facility of this quality, which is why this is a nonprofit, which is why it's a 501c3, which is why it's set up to serve the community. And when I say serve the community, we're really talking about the entire community and looking at an expansive list of people that we will serve and people that we'll work with to serve. So as you see here, serving multiple generations from cradle to active older adult programming, multiple demographics, um, making sure that we're serving the, the majority of the East End and the diverse population that lives here, and then multiple organizations that we'll partner with, school, hospital and healthcare, swim clubs, parks and recreation, et cetera. It's gonna take a village to bring this together and to deliver the way that it needs to be delivered to the community. Facility features, there are a lot of them, but if we break it down most simply, three types of water. And this is the differentiator for this facility versus anything else that's available around here. One of those areas, as Joe mentioned, competition ready lane pool, 25 meter by 25 yard pool with the seating and the spectator amenities and support areas necessary to host uh, competitions here on the East End. A warm water therapy pool, uh, that is typically in the you know, smaller range, 1,200 um, square feet or so is what we're looking at in terms of the size of that pool and uh, lower 90s in terms of the temperature, which makes it an ideal condition for, uh, of course, aquatics-based therapy, but also some of the group swim lessons, some of the uh, active older adult programming that will happen, and then an additional warm water recreation pool, which will have zero depth entry, it will have full, uh, full body slides for a little bit older kids, and it will have an additional flat water shallow area for some of those other swim lessons and group exercise classes that will take place. So um, Stott Architecture, Rick Scott, uh, Stott, as uh, was mentioned earlier, former board member and active architect here, um, put together this concept. And so the concept that's designed shows what the Star Center could be. It's not necessarily what it will be. We have a lot of work to do to get there. But these are the main components. And as you see the layout there, I mentioned the recreation pool, the therapy pool, the competitive swimming pool, and some of those other areas. You see a couple of images here from the outside, the vertical with the sloped roof. 
you see um, both ends of the building shown on the bottom two pictures, one looking in if you could see through the roof towards the uh, recreation pool, the other one towards the competitive pool. Ultimately, what we're really looking for here is function, function to serve the communities, function to um, deliver the programs that need to be um, administered here, and really that's what it's about. What it ends up looking like will be one thing, but what it ends up doing is really what we're focused on. So we want to make sure that we can feature all of the programs necessary to make this a fully functional, multifaceted facility that serves the community, as I said, multiple generations, multiple demographics, and works with multiple organizations. So if you look through the list of programs, I obviously won't read them all, but safety is a key element here. You're surrounded by water. This community sees drownings every single year, and a facility like this is necessary to waterproof your community and give a safe place for kids to learn to swim. Instructional programs so that they can grow through their swimming and aquatic endeavors, rehabilitative programs, whether that's uh, for the adaptive population, therapy, rehabilitation, anything related to uh, rehabilitative or um, service-oriented programs want to be able to run here competitive programs for club, for team, for events, fitness as well for um, active older adults as well as younger people who are looking to lap swim or take part in anything that is really about increasing their wellness. And then events, some of those fun areas that will keep uh, birthday parties and keep the community engaged and keep kids coming in and introduce new people. So as you've heard, uh, proposed location, what we're asking for is use of Red Creek Park. You can see in the bigger picture here how the site could fit on Red Creek Park. It would be in the southeast corner. So as you drive in directly to your right, you can see um, over here says animal shelter, but it's pointing to the other side of the road just to give you an orientation on Red Creek Park. But as you can see here as well, 200 parking spots, 200 plus parking spots, and the facility won't impede on any of the existing assets. So the skate park, the rink, um, the fields, to the north, north of there, the tennis courts, all of those will be uninhibited by the development of the Star Center. And of course, we are talking about a facility that isn't just for um, the surrounding community, not even just for, for Southampton and for the town, but it really is serving all of East End Long Island. So I won't go into any more detail on the board, but I do want to point out that the board is working tirelessly right now, doing everything they can, reaching out to people that they know, working on all of the strategies to make this facility reality, and they're using all of their skill sets, business management, education, government, marketing, operations management backgrounds, as you just heard from Joe, very skilled, very devoted, and very dedicated group of people working on this project. And then uh, the strategic planning partners, I'll give the quick overview of Councilman Hans Acre, even though George is right here and can do it much better than me. Simply put, they are the world's leading aquatic design firm. They've done more pools than any other uh, and any other organization in the country, and George represents a huge part of what they do, which is the operational uh, planning and strategic design of pools in communities to figure out what should be built, what the right size facility is, and how it will operate. SFA, Sports Facilities Advisory, we plan and fund facilities. We have a sister company that opens and manages facilities. That's called Sports Facilities Management, not engaged for this project, but on the SFA side, we've been doing this for 15 years representing more than $8 billion in planned and operational facilities, nationally and internationally, and <clears throat> serving over 1,500 different communities across the world. And then Cogio, who's not represented here tonight, they are a strategic funding partner on capital campaigns for nonprofits. So they are working right now on um, conducting interviews and doing a feasibility assessment for what can be raised philanthropically into this project from individuals, from corporations, and from foundations, which is a major component of the funding mechanism that we expect for the Star Center. So why it matters. This is what I really want to spend a little bit more time on. What we're seeing in youth uh, activity rates right now is a decline. Every single year, kids are dropping out of organized sports and organized activities. What's shown on the screen right now is the start of this, or one of the big tranches of this, the five-year span from 2008 to 2013, and some major um, sports that were in significant decline over that period of time. Over the last six years alone, we've had about five million kids drop out of organized youth activities. It's creating a lot of issues uh, from a health and from a social perspective in our country. This is the 2011 to 2016. It's more sports, so we did it a little bit differently graphically. But what you can see, actually maybe you can't see, so I'll tell you, um, 
a lot of what's on the left side down the middle, which is negative, are your traditional team sports, the sports that started off with a huge volume. So basketball, court volleyball, tackle football, and, um, and flag football, as well as outdoor soccer, all on the decline on an average basis in terms of total number of kids playing. Now more games are being played, but fewer children are playing. Where some sports are picking up is some of those upcoming uh, less popular sports. We see rugby is booming, field hockey is growing across the country, um, several others including lacrosse. You don't see swimming on here because I wanted to point this out separately. During this same period of time where many of our major sports are on a decline and the ones that are growing uh, most quickly are the ones that started off pretty small, swimming on swim team over the last, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last five years has grown 8.4% on an average for number of kids signed up for swim teams per year. 8.4% increase and swimming for fitness, although it doesn't really correlate to the team sports atmosphere, also growing almost 5% per year over the last five years. What that means is that these are activities that people want to participate in and here there's really no access for them to participate. I mentioned that there are a lot of problems that are coming along from health and a social perspective. This shows a bit of health. This is the United States against 15 peer countries in childhood obesity. What's shown on the screen here is kids ages 5 to 17 and demonstrating that almost 40 percent of our girls age 5 to 17 in this country are overweight or obese and almost 35 percent or actually at 35 percent of our boys are overweight or obese. You see that red bar at the top? That's the United States. Every one of those peer countries below us has smaller bars. We, right now, are winning the race that we don't want to win, and that is obesity in our children, and it's because we don't have great access for kids to be active at least three hours per day or per week throughout the year. Another trend that we're seeing is increasing cost to play, and what this is forcing us into is a scenario where it is only the kids who are able to pay the full rate and a full private sector rate that are able to participate, and this is a growing issue for us and a growing trend. Again, uh, this is a, a subsection, this is five key sports that we see, but you see the orange bars at the right? Those are the households earning more than $100,000 per year. And the dark blue bars to the left, those are the households that are earning less than $25,000 per year. So a significantly disproportional percent of kids who are in the upper uh, upper income brackets are playing because they're the ones that can afford to pay. And that's why facilities like this that are delivered as nonprofits that can afford to generate a scholarship and to charge lower rates because of the way that they're funded and the way that they interact with the community are so vitally important to combating these problems and participation in sports. Mentioning those kids who are less likely to play, there may be some perspective that there are a lot of people in this community that can afford to pay the full rate and that is certainly true, but let's, let's also look at the facts of the numbers here. What you see all the way on the right of this slide is where I'm going to start. That pie graph shows the 15-minute drive time household income from Red Creek Park. What's demonstrated here is that almost 30% of the households within 15 minutes of Red Creek Park earn less than $50,000 a year. And almost 13% of those households earn less than $25,000 per year. You know that if you were to adjust the cost of living for living on East End Long Island, this would be a compounding factor versus most of the, uh, most of the rest of the country. Um, so we do see and we recognize a significant number of people here that need access to recreation and need it to be affordable. Uh, the other thing that we see is that currently you are losing kids and young adults. So the top left of this slide shows your population over the next five years and the projections and what you see in yellow is 2022 and in blue is 2017 and where you see those drops are every age bracket below 24 where you see the increases are 25 and up until you get to 85 and older so we're seeing um, in most cases an aging population and kids and young adults leaving this community and one of those reasons is because there is not recreation and parents who are looking for places for their kids to play and looking for quality of life and sense of place and the safety and the growth and the benefits that come along with active recreation simply can't find you around recreation here with the exception of very few facilities in this area. So we looked at the Star Center, we looked at the opportunity to develop an aquatics facility and we said what does it need to have and the answer was pretty simple. 
It needs to have everything. So that's what's built into this plan. If you look at the Star Center versus any of these other facilities that are aquatic based or have aquatic components on Long Island, the Star Center has everything that you would look for. Lap lane pool with competition amenities, warm water recreation pool, the fun factor for the older kids, body slides, full slides that go into that warm water pool, as well as a therapy pool. And this would be a differentiator. It would be a unique facility here on the island, on East and Long Island, serving in ways that no other facility can serve. And this is where it really comes down to mattering. These are the impacts of activity on kids. I think most, uh, most sensibly, if you get kids active at least three hours per week throughout the year, they're going to be much less likely to be obese and overweight. In fact, they are one-tenth as likely as their inactive peers to develop childhood obesity. Those kids go on and in school they earn higher test scores. As teenagers, they are less likely to participate in risk behaviors related to sex, drugs, and alcohol. They are more likely to graduate from high school and more likely to have the option to go to college if they are active when they're younger versus their inactive peers. As they get older and they get into the real world, those adults that were active at least three hours per week earn more money as adults, seven to eight percent more in fact. They're more productive at work, they go on to be healthier adults, they have lower health care costs, so they make more and they spend less related to their revenue and their, their expenditure on health care costs. Not demonstrated fully on here um, in terms of numbers, but something really important to recognize is that active kids are twice as likely to become active adults, and active adults are six times as likely to have active kids which means that getting kids active in this community through year-round recreation, giving them the opportunity to participate in active activities throughout the year, at least three hours per week, makes a long-term intergenerational cycle on your community. That's why we think this project is so exciting, and that's why we think this project is so important. So it's ambitious. In order to build everything, especially if you're looking at indoor aquatics, it's going to cost money, money to build and money to operate. So this ambitious plan, is um, it's got a lot of momentum right now. We're talking currently, we're launching interviews with over 150 different people and groups in this community during part of that feasibility process that I mentioned that Koji is undertaking. And we are talking to people, figuring out exactly where we can go to get a bulk of the money from, as I mentioned before, the individual donors, the corporate entities, and the foundations. But that's not all we're looking at. We're looking at state funds and development incentives. We're looking at schools, the healthcare and hospital system, we're looking at <clears throat> um, colleges and then certain tax credits that could be applied here with federal incentives as well. And the town comes into play as well. Now you see there are some brackets after the town, really important to recognize here for this community. We are not asking the town to bond any money towards this project. We're not asking for, for new taxes to be implemented in order to pay for this. What we're asking for is use of land, which is not currently being used for recreation. It's available on the site and if we get access to that and get to build it, we will use that land under a long-term land lease and we're asking for annual support, not in new taxpayer dollars, but in terms of annual support similar to other um, facilities that the town is, is part of supporting here on East End. So once again, not looking for new taxes to be raised. This is a private nonprofit facility that's developed for the purpose of serving the community. We think there's huge benefit to that. So we're going through this process right now. We're actively engaging in this, and this is going to be an accordion, right? It's going to take some time, and we don't know how much time it will take. But ultimately, this is what it will uh, this is what it will take to get it done. It will take a variety of sources, a variety of groups coming together, and support from the community. So, speaking of support from the community, we want to ask the question: Will the Star Center be part of your legacy? Will this be something that you support? So. Asking the questions that are up there, if you're interested in having a community asset that serves those multiples, as I mentioned before, the generations, the demographics, and works with multiple communities. If you're interested in having an indoor aquatic recreation center that is best in class and best on East End Long Island. If you're interested in having your community have access to, a, to a, an asset that serves as a hub for multiple people to come together throughout the year, and or if you're just interested generally in your community being healthier, having social, educational, and economic benefits from an asset like this, then you can help to support the Star Center. So the ways that you can do that, number one, communicate with your elected officials. Number two, talk to your friends and neighbors about the Star Center. 
And number three, connect with us. The website is live, it's launched, we're gonna take you to that really quickly. Here's the website on the screen and during the question and answer session uh, or the comment sharing session, we'll also have this up, but staraquaticcenter.com. So if you're in the audience right now and you would like to go to staraquaticcenter.com, take out your smartphone, which I know probably everyone out here has, and I'm gonna click over to the website here and although it'll look a little bit different on your mobile site than it will look on this, maybe I'll click over. Uh, on this uh, web version. If you land at the home page, you're going to get to scroll down and you'll pass through a number of things. There are some of the architectural renderings, some, some images, um, a little bit of uh, exploration pieces here. You'll see a 3D rendering um, that was done by Stott Architecture. And this is where I want you to go. Stay in touch with the Star Center. All you have to do is enter your first name, your last name, and your email. That will give you the opportunity to opt in for occasional updates. We're not going to blast you with information. We're not going to be asking for money every single day. We're going to keep you updated, let you know about the progress of the Star Center. When we have a press release, you'll get to see that uh, through email. When we have an exciting update to share with you, when we add content to the website, when things are happening that should be shared in the community, we're going to let you know through the website. Now, there are a number of other functions of this website. Um, you can click on news articles that have already happened. You can click on the project updates. You can contact us and share some thoughts on the Contact Us page. That gets your information into our system so we can update you, but you can also update us. So if you go to Contact Us and you have questions or you want to get involved, you want to send a message, you can submit that through the website as well. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention to you that there is also a Donate Now button. So if you're at home, if you're in the audience, if you want to get a jump on this project and you want to support it and lead the way for the star, you can click the Donate Now button. It's through a secured site uh, that will, will take your donation and we would certainly appreciate that. Um, but it doesn't take a donation to be involved in this project. It takes your support, it takes your voice, it takes you talking to your friends and neighbors, you talking to your elected officials, and you just keeping up with the project because it is important and it is, it is exciting. It has an awful lot of opportunity and promise for this community. We're excited to be part of it. And with that, I will turn it over to, uh, to you, and we'll answer questions or hear your feedback, and certainly appreciate your time so far tonight. Just give us your name and... Um, oh, we're, oh, we can come right up to the podium. And please just give us your name and where you live, and then either make your comment or ask your question. Hi, I'm Dave Riley. I live in East Quag. Uh, I have my daughter Kendall here. We're uh, huge fans of this project. Um, we see the importance in swimming. We try to get into a pool once a week, and we drive to Gurney's in Montauk and to Patchogue, and um, it, I think it's <clears throat> well overdue, and for a variety of reasons that you guys have outlined, uh, a total asset to the community. Um, and so hearing it laid out so succinctly is much appreciated, and we'd like to continue to offer support, and hopefully um, this gains even more traction, and the community sees the tremendous value um, as a waterfront community. Um, it's a shame that we can't be in the water for all 12 months and teach more and more to enjoy it. So I'd like to just offer my support and thanks for bringing this to the forefront. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Sage Certain. I am an active member of this community. I ride my bike every day and uh, I actually ride at that skate park right next to where the center is going to be. I think the center is a great idea. I love the fact that you guys are really paying a lot of attention to the kids. Um, I feel like that's a big problem that the kids don't have much to do inside year round. There's parks, there's wonderful beaches, there's all kinds of other assets that we enjoy in the summertime. But to be indoors and have a place to just go as a center and just enjoy activities I think would be great. Um, I'm definitely a swimmer. I've been to the YMCA. I've been to 
you know, multiple places around. Um, there's nothing really that close to Southampton. Um, so the fact that it's going to be in Hampton Bays is great. Um, I would love to see, if possible, some attention to the skate park itself. If you guys could maybe partner with another architect or something in the future, I would love to like help and do whatever I can as far as getting some kids support, getting kids out here to advocate in this meeting right now, um, you know, pushing it out on social media, the whole thing. So I think it's a great idea, and I think there's a lot more that can come out of it. So I think it's awesome. Thank you. So we'll repeat it. Yep, so to re repeat our questions, he uh, asked uh, if since we downsized from the 50 meter uh, by 25 yard competition pool to the 25 yard by 25 meter competition pool, we didn't mention the depth. Uh, with the inclusion of the shallow uh, warm water pool, uh, there'd be the option for the competition pool to be all deep. So we could uh, start at eight feet, go down to 12 feet. So we could have one and three meter diving. Um, or another popular way to do it is to put the starting blocks in the deep end and that pool would be anywhere from say uh, four and a half feet down to, to 12 to 13 feet. Uh, I'm Michael Riley, I live in Southampton, um, but I grew up in Indiana northern Indiana, a very industrial part of the state. Um, I moved out here 40 years ago, and one of the things that has always amazed me, coming from Indiana, where there was literally a competition pool in every high school. Um, and not just in Indiana, in the, in the Midwest in general. It's much more aquatic friendly. And I, under, I understand that the argument that has been made locally for years, starting back when Dr. Wright was trying to get a pool built, was that you don't need a pool because you have the ocean. And anybody that swims know, knows that, what a fallacy that is, because swim, learning to swim in the ocean is a lot more difficult than learning to swim in a pool. And having a year-round center uh, for the community, for the, for all of the community, for the year-round community particularly, I think would be uh, an extraordinary um, asset to the town. And uh, I, I, I also, uh, personally, uh, swimming changed my life. Um, I swam in high school, um, and it just lent itself to a, a different level of engagement um, and health, and uh, I, I still swim and I uh, love it. So please build this pool. <laughs> My name is Carol Margaritas and I live in the village of Southampton and uh, I was at Katina's today and I saw the flyer and it caught my attention. Um, and I came for selfish reasons because I love to swim. Uh, <laughs> I lived out here back in the 1980s, uh, and I used to go to Flanders to swim. And some nights we would go to Flanders, and some nights we would go to Gurney's to, um, because that was the two places. And uh, so on a personal level, I would love to have a pool, but I came here tonight, and I hear that there's also a very good reason, another very good reason to have a, a pool, and that's for the children. And so. Uh, I heard your passion, as those, um, I'm sure all the board members share that, and so I came for myself, but uh, I will stay in support for the idea of, of taking care of all the needs of all the people in this community, and I think a pool at a, uh, a recreation center like this would just be phenomenal. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank everybody for coming and supporting this effort. Um, that's now in its 31st year for me. I sat in 
Richard Pelican's office on Jagger Lane in 1987 with half a dozen people I never met before and began talking about the need for this. And that effort didn't go anywhere and neither did the two or three others that got very close. So this is the epitome of try, try again. And uh, I, think we're, I think we're on the right track this time. We have the right team put together. Uh, we have the support of the town. And we have first hand the understanding, I think, for the first time that this is really a community, um, a community facility. It's, it's not, as has been criticized before, just for elite swimmers. It's really going to benefit thousands of people from the whole East End and points west in Suffolk County. When I was training a lot, I, I used to train with people that picked me up or I picked them up in carpools that traveled an hour to swim two or three times a week. That kind of commitment is amazing. And to have a facility only minutes away instead of an hour away is gonna make a huge difference in the amount of people who really become active. The last time I was in front of the board, I told a story about Vince Canusio, a past um, town supervisor who, when he was diagnosed with cancer, called me kind of out of the blue and apologized to me for not supporting the effort we made to get a pool built during his tenure. And it upset him a lot. And uh, it was an important story to me, very um, revealing. And I have hundreds of stories like that, my own and others, important stories about swimming and lives and how the swimming has changed and um, enhanced people's lives. But I'm not going to tell any of those stories. I want to do something a little different. Because I think this effort tonight, this presentation tonight is geared towards helping the community understand how it's going to benefit them and not just elite swimmers. I want to ask a few questions and I want to ask the audience to participate a little bit. We're all tired of sitting down anyway. I'd like to ask the people who are or have close family members or close family friends that are competitive swimmers or swim regularly, recreationally, go swim laps, even if it's seasonally, swim to do it, to go out there and do it. I want those people to stand up, people who are swimmers. Wow, there's a lot, so it's not just the elites. Of course, this is uh, the choir we're talking to here, of course, right? Um, the people who, all, who can't swim or know people who can't swim, would you please stand up? Everyone stay up, stay up. It won't take long, I promise. <laughs> Any lifeguards in the room, I'd like them to stand up. Water safety instructors, <clears throat> these people are already standing, so. How about scuba divers? This facility is a perfect location to train scuba diving, and there's a lot of scuba diving on the East End. Any scuba divers here? Okay. Emergency services, the fire department, police department, ambulance squads, all those volunteers have divisions that they need water construction, water training, scuba diving training, rescue training, all of those can benefit by this facility. Any surfers here? My son's a surfer, he doesn't live in this country anymore. He's one of the premier surfers in Ireland, a big wave rider, a movie maker, also a school teacher. I'm proud of him. I'm sad that he doesn't live here. If this facility had been done, he might still be around, and that's true. How about stand-up paddleboarders, kayakers, fishermen, boaters of any kind? Anybody who has had or will have physical therapy from an injury or surgery? <clears throat> Anybody left sitting down? You guys don't know it, but you need this facility too, if you're still sitting. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can also. I'm, I'm really touched by this effort, and um, I, I feel very positive and hopeful that it's going to go forward. I'll do my best.
Thank you. Thank you. But I just want to speak. Um, I became pastor at St. Rosalie's in Hampton Bays in 2010. I now consider myself an East Ender. When I go a little west, I tell my brother priests or my parishioners I'm going up island. But I have to say, being the pastor of the largest Catholic church on the East End, with over 3,000 families in the winter, and 5,000 families from Memorial Day till Columbus Day, I sometimes find it difficult to believe we don't have an indoor facility to swim. I love to swim. When I got here, I heard there was a pool at the Omni. I called immediately and I was told, we're redoing it, but we're not gonna put the pool in. I don't even know how large the pool was. I went to the pool up in, uh, what was that, Safety Swim, is that what it's called? And I looked at the size of the pool and I said, uh, oh, you can only use it on Tuesday nights. And I said, it's not really big enough for me. <laughs> so I started going to the pool in Mastic and now I belong to the Y in East Hampton. Tuesday morning, I didn't have the early mass. So I said, let me get to the Y early. I got a little involved with a couple of things going on. So I didn't leave before 6.30. But I did leave about 10 to 7. That day, there was horrific traffic, as there is. And I got there at about t maybe 10, 12 minutes after 8. Now, I'm pastor of a busy parish, so I can't really be traveling for three hours. Um, you know, and I, and I think this maybe is symbolic of some of my parishioners and others. Um, I did go last night to the pool because I had the kind of day that I said, I need to swim at least 20 laps. So I went last night, I got there at 10 to 8. I got into the pool and I found out there were programs going on. I had re read the schedule wrong. But I convinced those doing the synchronized swimming that I could swim the lanes because I needed to do it for my own health. So I would say for the sake of our youth, for the future, for health, we need this pool. I support it 100%. like to commend those who have stayed with the idea of bringing a pool to the Southampton, the East End area. Forty years ago, there were two students at Southampton College, and they started a children's swim team. It lasted three or four years. It was a wonderful experience for any youngster who was part of it. And then for many years, I went to the Omni and I was very sad when they closed it, closed the pool, because many of the people going there were of my vintage. So I, I commend you and I wish you well in moving forward on this. I just want to say that swimming is a lifetime sport. So you start when you're young, maybe you compete in high school or college, maybe not. Maybe you stop for a while, but it's like riding a bike where you never forget. You can always come back to it. I have been swimming in Mastic, and that pool is very, very hot. Really too hot for laps. But I understand it because most of the people who use that pool have a really hard time moving. They do some water exercise, they just move around a little bit, they need a warm pool. But it, the parachute jumpers were in there the other day, I don't know how they did it. Swimming 25 yards, meters, no breath, in 86 or 90 degree water. It was, it's ridiculous. We really need a facility like this on the East End. It's a fabulous location because I'm from Hampton Bays, but it has a good radius too. A lot of people that swim at Mastic come from Riverhead, from Kutchog, all the way from there. And I know we have some star swimmers in Hampton Bays that go to East Hampton now, and they may or may not change. They might have team loyalty there, but 
we should be able to facilitate a career for kids like that. So we really need this. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jim Arnold. I'm with the East Hampton Ocean Rescue and uh, an avid master swimmer. Happened to be one of the guys who used to pick up Rick years ago and drive to uh, St. Joe's actually at 5.30 in the morning. And I swam with a number of other great folks. Um, the pool is a necessity. We use the YMCA now three to five days a week. We train uh, our lifeguards, we train um, a number of different school programs. The kids that get to swim um, become great people in our community, become lifeguards, become community leaders. I think you've seen and talked to or heard from enough people that tell you it's a life experience. When it comes to my own experiences being a lifeguard or a swim team, member and then a lifeguard, and now a lifeguard all my life. Um, it will be something that will build in this community. I do hope that you guys recognize the fact that if you build this, it won't be just thousands. It'll be tens of thousands. Understand that. Our YMCA started out, they thought probably we would have three to five hundred people visit this facility uh, daily, and I bet it is triple that. We've blown it out by the seams. I think that you guys should really consider looking at how this will expand and go bigger than you guys expect. I know that there were 30 of us that used to travel from East Hampton. It took us an hour and 15 minutes to go to St. Joe's to swim. And people from all over this community in 50 mile radius, if you build it right, they will come. So we look forward to the community. And even though I'm in East Hampton, I'll come. <laughs> um, my name is Liz Riley, I swim. Um, I think it's really important about the tax issue because I have heard people talking about it saying, we don't, I'm not going to support it. You know, taxes, I'm not going to do it. So maybe on the website that could be somewhere highlighted because that's an important issue. People want to know they're not going to be taxed. It's, it's under the Q&A. We felt that was a question that would be definitely on people's minds. No, it will not be an issue of raising taxes. This is all going to be privately raised. And one of the things that we're in the process of doing right now is the 12 board members have each submitted names of people. Not many of us rub elbows with the very, very affluent members of our community who are usually only here for the season. But you might know someone who knows someone. So we need any ideas from you of people that you believe have some kind of affinity for the project. Somebody who you know is, a, is an avid swimmer or a sailor or a boater or uh, somebody who cares about child health care and obesity prevention. Or someone, as we said, this pool isn't just going to be um, for the children. It's going to be for all of us in between. People who are at various stages of their lives and who need it for aquatic therapy, people who just want to go and have warm water in the middle of February and um, be in the company of other people in a bright, cheery place where uh, people are active. You know, we've, we've heard so much about the opioid crisis and we've heard so much about um, all of the stress and the mental health issues. Well, I'm one of the fortunate ones because I did my planning well and I get to the sunshine in the, in the winter months. But there are a whole lot of kids and adults stuck in their homes here in winter with nothing to do. And this could be a magnet for bringing young people into um, a community, a sense of community. And we, we really haven't talked much tonight about the economic impact of this. But we're talking about jobs. We're talking about people who will have jobs, not just the life-saving, 
because we hope to have a very fully robust, like East Hampton does, uh, ocean life saving crew eventually. But we're talking about people who will be over, I think, um, 50 or 60 hours of lifeguarding will be needed every day because the facility, we hope, will be open from 6 a.m. to like 9 p.m. So we're talking two lifeguards at the pool every hour throughout that day. We're talking about a director, um, accounting, bookkeepers, people who are receptionists. Every um, facet of this building has to be considered, and so it will have direct impact on jobs in the area. And then the corresponding jobs from um, restaurants and gas stations and local businesses that will be um, certainly enhanced by this. Now, we haven't really actively pursued the business community yet for their support, but we know that this will bring many, many dollars to the East End. And more importantly, the kinds of jobs that we're talking about could change people's lives. And we know, you know, we know very um, active swimmers right now who are getting scholarships, opportunities to travel, opportunities to engage with other people. It's, it's just going to be a transformative place. And we know we can do it if we've got all of the wonderful support we've heard in this room tonight. We need your help. So we really do hope you'll go on the website, give us your email. I texted people who had given me the email at our last meeting. If you give us your email or if you get on this site, we will get you regular updates. But we really need everybody's support to get us across to the finish line. Are there any other questions? Yes, comment, please. Hello, my name is Elaine Kremborg, and first of all, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Because anybody who knows me knows this is a dream come true. I've been an avid swimmer and a diver my whole life, and um, every year when I go into my parents' town pool, I would always do the token one and a half and just, yahoo, I did it. And then a couple of years ago, I got an injury on my back. And I've been to several doctors, I've done physical therapy, and um, nothing has helped it. And I know in my heart that swimming is what's going to get my, me in better condition. And I'm not able to play tennis anymore, I'm not able to do um, daily life activities to my full potential. So even sitting in a car for 25 minutes to go to the YMCA is just too much. It just doesn't work for me. And um, so anything to get back in the water. And I think for the whole community, people who don't realize it now really um, take it from me. You'll just enjoy it. It's, and like Josephine just said, it's going to impact the community in more ways than you would imagine right now. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I look forward to helping and supporting in any way I can. Thank you. One last chance. Um, it sounds like you have all the pieces to the puzzle. What is the big stumbling block? Is it just support? $25 million. <laughs> But I thought you said you had, that you're going to go to the different foundations and yes. fundraising and all that stuff. So you have all your approvals, and right now it's just a money matter. No, we're, we have a town board member, Tommy Scavoni has arrived, and uh, we have support on the town board, but after this hearing tonight, or public forum, we, um, we will hope that the town board, having heard the uh, really for all positive uh, support for this project, take the formal steps to enter into a lease agreement with us so that we can now go forward with our fundraising efforts uh, with a clear guaranteed site for umpteen years um, and, uh, and, and begin in earnest the fundraising, which will start this week with the first list of people that we've submitted um, you know, we've, we've all kidded, it could happen in one afternoon, it could, 
more than likely it will take somewhere around 18 to 24 months to try to raise this kind of money. Right. But we're... I think it's easier to raise money if someone is donating and they know when they donate their money that they'll see it happen in their lifetime, that then like 20 years or 30 years doesn't go by. So it seems from what you just said, the most important thing is you get your approvals. Yeah. Well, getting the approval, and I really have to say this, and I, I can't tell you how, um, having been in the project for many, many years, um, Evan and George are just such great um, uh, supports for us because they made it happen in 1,500 locations in 46 states. They know how to work with all of the people and they are guiding us every step of the way. And as I said before, you know, my good intentions and all the good people in this room, we all will have wanted it for a long time. But we now have taken the money that was raised to date and are utilizing it wisely to get the right people to get us to the right steps so that each step of the way, right now we are conducting a financial feasibility study. We don't know what that will say. It might say you can raise $30 million. Well, if we could raise $30 million, 25 of it will go to immediately starting the pool and the other will go into a fund to support and make sure that we could ideally give free memberships to any child under 16 to support people who couldn't otherwise financially be a part of this. So we, and we have a also something that's a real reality. It's expensive to run an aquatic facility. We know we have to raise an additional $600,000 a year to operate in the black, at least in the initial startup years when we know uh, it's going to grow over time, as we've seen in East Hampton. So there's, um, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic. Um, once this, this process is over and the board gives us that approval, we feel confident that we have the skillful professional fundraisers and professional consultant team in place to get us across the finish line this time. Thank you. In the foreseeable future. I just don't so what you're saying is the biggest stumbling block is the town of Southampton. You don't have the approval on the site, right? and you don't have you know, permission to build on that piece of property. So that is... I, I That's feel step one. That, that is the... And I think that if you get the permission, then the money's going to follow. It's hard to donate money to something mm -hmm. that doesn't have right. sound ground. Right. Or in what do they call Hampton Bay is good ground? So the town board, I believe, will be starting to address this at upcoming meetings, and we hope you'll be, some of you will be present and, and continue to make your voices felt. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll hear from the town board. A town board member. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom John Scavoni. I am a member of the uh, town board, and I would like to say that a uh, fellow town board member, Julie Lofsted, is also here, as was Jay Snardeman. Um, that constitutes a majority here at this meeting, so I, I think that's a good sign, and I just you know, want to underscore that. Of course, this project would have to go through all of the permitting processes that, you know, that would be required of any structure or anything that would be built in Red Creek. But uh, we were smiling when we, uh, you know, had your presentation before the town board a couple of weeks ago. So, Great. thank you. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> and Julie was with us almost two years ago at the first meeting to express her support, even agreed to bake brownies, I remember, Julie. <laughs> so, whatever it's gonna take, it's gonna take all of us. If there's no other, oh, okay. I'm not a naysayer by any stretch. I'm a total swimmer. Um, I've lost my kids to a foreign country and to the other side of the country for swimming. Um, what's to say this pool isn't going to be downsized? I mean, no offense, the East Hampton Rec Center started as a 50 meter by 25 yard. Montauk Playhouse started out bigger. It's now barely four lanes. We did get nine feet passed. 
<coughs> what's to say this isn't going to go to just a 25-yard pool? Because that's a big difference. I mean, for, for your programming alone, 25-yard pool, you're going to be overrun before you even open the door. So how are we knowing, you know, I don't want to go out and ask people that I happen to know that could put some of this bill <coughs> if all of a sudden the pool is now a 25-yard pool instead of a 25-meter. I mean, I think it's, a lot of us were really excited about the idea of a 50-meter because that gives us a lot of opportunity. It's going to be 25-yard by 25-meter. Right. That and is it's not going any smaller. No. Not getting any smaller. No. It, we may have fewer kinds of water, but we, uh, you know, we're going to be a, uh, we're going to have a competitive pool with diving, and beyond that, we're hoping, if, if the financial feasibility study indicates it, that we can support the 25 million. We will have a full aquatic therapy sec uh, pool dedicated exclusively for that. We're also hoping to build this leisure kind of facility, leisure park, with like a lazy river, warm water, lap area where parents could swim their laps while they're watching their children in that area. But all of that is contingent upon getting the full amount. Okay. Is there any, any chance that you will go back to a bigger size if you get the funds? Or is that just, it, this is it, this is all we're asking for, there's no expansion possibility, there's no chance of... I, well, we never that, say that never, but is, is, yeah. You know, I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to put this out of you know out of right. the realm of what's realistic for this area. When Councilman Hunsaker came on the scene and looked at the original feasibility study in the 50 meter, it was their opinion, professional opinion, um, and that we couldn't sustain that size pool here. Maybe maybe in years to come. But right now, opening the door and putting a 50 meter in the ground, it would be <clears throat> not only a three to four million more to bill, it's also more to heat, more to, uh, you know, the maintenance, the equipment, the uh, materials, and the lifeguarding. And I believe that the lifeguards for a 50 meter pool are significantly more. Please jump yeah, in. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, all of this is a process, right? There, right. Th there's a bit of a science to this. And so um, the process that we really went through first was with the operational feasibility assessment, which was to say, what's the right size pool for this size community and the activities that can take place here, which is why it was downsized from a 50 meter pool to a 25 meter by 25 yard pool. Obviously, there are benefits to a, to a full 50 meter pool. Um, the, the financial feasibility, the long-term operational costs of that are not feasible in this community of this size at this time. So um, the, based on the numbers, so, um, so the, that, that was starting block number one. That helped us to paint the vision of what the facility should be and we know the cost estimate for that facility in today's dollars with future inflation. So we are looking at the future cost of building this. The process that we're going through right now is to make sure that we have the community support, the town support for the site, and um, philanthropic dollars, corporate dollars, foundation dollars, state incentive, federal, what I mentioned before, to get to our funding target. So this is the due diligence phase for that funding target feasibility that we're going through right now. If there were to be more dollars available, if the next few months of this, feasi of this due diligence phase were to show that instead of $25 million, we could raise 35 or $45 million or whatever the number ends up being, then we would have the decision. Do we want to expand to a 50 meter pool, which would mean that we'd have to take some of those dollars, put it into a larger endowment to support the ongoing operational costs and the increased expenses, um, or would we look at the expansion into some other dry area training uh, pieces or whatever else it may be to, to support the community. For right now, the early indicators are that the $25 million target is realistically what we can afford to build and operate, and that's why this is the vision the, that, we're, that we're going forward with in terms of communicating, asking for the town support, asking for people's support. I understand that. Um, I'm the group that no one sees or recognizes. I coach the synchronized swimming team out here, and I have kids that are nationally ranked. Um, no one, I have been at the Y since the doors have opened. We have people that do not know there is a team out here. 
Hmm. I have a, a daughter who swam four years of college. She's currently national coach in Western Australia for synchronized swimming. Again, she swam here. Half the community doesn't know we're here. I have a hard time growing a program because I only get evening hours because high school swimming is in, hurricane <laughs> swimming is in, which my daughter's both swam swim team. The smaller pool with the larger area you're encompassing, I just feel is going to be, no offense, you're not going to have room for some of the groups that you're hopefully targeting, other than the additional pool itself. I really feel like I don't know that I can buy into this if it's a smaller pool because I can see the small groups, like myself, getting the late hours. My team doesn't go into the pool until 7 o'clock at night. I have 10-year-olds. <clears throat> That's late, okay? That's not going to help my program grow. It's a concern I have about the size of the pool you're putting in. When you were putting in a 50 meter, I was, you know, so gun ho for it. I run lifeguarding in WSI classes until 10:30 at night. That's tough on high school kids. Look, I, I just that's it's just something I think yep. everybody needs to hear. That I think, no offense to the Y, and the Y knows it. Um, I'm also Gurney's, and I am doing part of the playhouse. Those pools are already overrun. They're mm -hmm. too full, and that's just further east end. Mm -hmm. Southampton, Hampton Bays, Quag, swimmers coming from Kachok, you're going to have more people than I think you realize you're going to get through that door. Well, as I said, we're never going to say never, but we will see what this financial feasibility study shows. We need it to be fiscally prudent that we had to build a facility that we knew, know can be sustained. And that's why we took a second look. We did a, a review of the original feasibility study so that we had the numbers solidly in, in really good shape by people who do this for a living and have done it multiple times in multiple places. We, we are listening to our experts. Right now, that's what they're saying to us. If we were to be faced with the most difficult problem of having too much money, <laughs> we would re revisit it. Of course we would. Um, but, we, but it would have to get way out there because right now, we need to make sure that we could build a pool that could be affordable to everybody in this community and not just a small cluster of kids who could use it for a specific purpose and I take nothing away from the wonderful work you're doing. I just, we have to make sure that the entire facility and its complexity can be supported by the demographics right now and the dollars that we can be raised. Okay. Yeah. I Any last words? Well, then, I'll close by thanking you once again for coming, thanking George and Evan and our wonderful board and supportive board and community for your wonderful thoughts tonight and, and uh, energy uh, to keep us going. Please go on the website. Please, we have some extra flyers. Take them. Talk about it with your friends and neighbors. Get on. Um, and give us your e email so that we can keep you in touch with our progress. All right? Thank you. Safe home. <laughs>